Hello, 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 everybody. This is Dr. Schneef Early, your craft doctor, and I'm here with another video, and I want to show you how I use my Centra machine with my Rorobi drill. So I'm going to cast on, let me go to the cast on needle. So what I do is, because this machine don't have any markings, like the black needles and stuff, I just put some, um marker on the two pegs just before the white needle okay so you wrap you put a few inches in here and you wrap it around that first white needle and then you go behind the next one in front and behind in front like that and i'm not able to zoom in because the camera's on the argon mount and i can't see it um, to zoom but if you see what I'm doing I'm just going behind the first needle in front of the second one so it's catching so every other one is catching the thread okay and all I'm doing is turning my crank as you can see behind and in front behind in front behind in front behind in front and you're gonna do that until you get back to that white needle. Make sure it catches in that white needle and then put it in the tension guider. And then there's a tension guide right here. Okay, I, I'm doing this in my living room because I'm, my craft table is too tall. Okay, so if you see is it's on each peg and then what I do is I cast on or crank on a few rows if you can see my thumb I'm holding my thread because if there's any knots in the ball you want to be able to catch that okay you want to be able to catch if there's any knots and so I run a few rows just to get me started. Okay, and my machine has suction cups. So I have my small Tim Holtz glass mat and it's connected to the glass mat and it's sitting on a box. The reason it's sitting on a box is because with my Rorobi drill, I have a four amp battery and it's tall and I need it to be the same height to be able to plug in here and you want it to be the same height because you don't want to have to hold your drill up. If you have this drill or if you buy this drill from Home Depot, it comes with a one amp battery. And if you have the one amp battery, you may have to tilt it to hold it like this. Or if you have it on a box like this, put something underneath that to make it the same height, okay? Okay, so now I've gotten, it says two rows. I'm going to put my drill on. You can buy the little drill attachment from um, anywhere. I bought mine from Amazon, but you can get it from Etsy or private makers or whatever. Um, so scout around. The drill is what I really want to talk about. If you see the 4 amp battery, which right now Home Depot has them for $79.99 for two. So then you can always have one charge and work with one. Um, normally they're $79 each, but it's two in a pack right now. This drill was, how much was this drill, honey? Mr. Early, how much was this drill? Like $50, $60? Yeah. It was like $60, $59.99, something like that on Home Depot. Um, and so the drill and the battery, give or take $150 or something like that. Um, or if you don't buy this one, it comes with a one amp battery, which is the short battery, but one amp and a half runs out quicker than a four. So because it has this height now, it goes directly in. I don't have to hold up this heavy drill. All I have to do is start the, the wine. Also, if you can see, most drills you press, it just goes. 
This one doesn't do that. This one allows a slow crank. You see how I can, I've can? i moved up my speed? I'm doing that with the handle. But most drills won't allow that. I'm releasing. And I release during the process so the drill is not constantly spinning and working. Also, when you if you hold your yarn, it adds a different tension, but it also allows for you to feel if there's any knots in it. So then you can stop. If you look here, you can see that my yarn burnt up. That gives you the opportunity to fix it beforehand. The table I'm using, I just felt a knot is right here. Right here. It's finna come up to the tensioner so i'm taking it out the tensioner and it's so small i can let it go through the upper tension and start back again the table i'm using is uh, one of those adjustable tables i got from amazon um and it has like the expandable legs there's another knot um not expandable legs foldable legs and you put it in the slots there is another knot right there. Okay, so you see how I'm allowing the drill to do the work, but I'm I wouldn't have had I would have had to stop cranking if I didn't feel that knot. Okay, using the drill helps to get even pressure, also even tension, not pressure, even tension on your yarn, which helps with slip stitches and if you can look into it you can see that I have even stitches all the way around it looks gorgeous okay and I'm on row 16 a lot of people say that they counter don't work but mine works um I hear it every time it's not that loud but I'm right here of course I was just checking for a slip stitch. I might have a jump stitch right here where that biggest knot was, but I'll know when I take it off. Let me look. No, I'm fine. It's just I, the knot is there and I can see it. So then you can, you can do fast or slow. I try to keep it at a moderate speed, but I also let go. Every so often I'll let go. My ball of yarn is on the floor. And I'm just checking, making sure that this is not a drop stitch. It is a, it's, it's a jump stitch, but it's not dropped, so it's fine. I keep looking. But you can see I'm, my arm is right here. The drill is standing by itself. If wherever you are, if you, it's, my drill is far away because my table is right here and it's not pulled close to me. But you can rest your arm on something one of my couch cushions rest your arm so that you're not stressing out your arm all you're doing is pressing with your thumb see that clean and simple I'm not sure if you can see my row counter. Um, I do hold on to this sometimes to make sure it doesn't slide, but I really never have a problem with it sliding um, because it's on this box. But if you have something you can put, if your if your uh, glass mat is totally on, if it's totally on the table, it has feet, so you don't have to worry about it slipping. Out. And so I couldn't spin this fast. I could spin this fast, but not this fast. You see how that is just, it's just chugging along. I never let it spin on that super fast speed. So. And see, I have done 50 rows in approximately, I don't know, 
how long yet. Let me see. I've done 50 rows and I've been on camera for 10 minutes and that's including the cast on and talking. 50 rows. So technically using a drill, I probably can pump out this um, in like 15 minutes. We'll see. I'm going to 110 rows. I do between 110 and 120. Um, I'm checking my ball of yarn is on the floor. Um, based on, I'm, these hats are for hat, not hate. And I'm using them for the hat, not hate. And I know there's some children that's bigger and smaller. So I'm doing 120 for some and 110 for some just for the purpose of smaller and larger heads and i'm on row 70. and what i realized i'm going to have to add another color on the end of this but I'm prepared for that. I have one of the colors waiting um, because I know this ball is going to run out. And I'm on 85 already. What I also like to do is I like to bring this up so it's not dragging and let it weigh itself down, which helps weigh our stitches. It gives weight to the stitches. I might get a hundred out of this color, and then my last row would be that. I might not get a hundred. <laughs> I might not get a hundred out of this though, because it's running out fast. Come on, baby, give me a hundred. Give me a hundred. I'm at ninety something. Nope. Almost made it. I'm at ninety-seven, and I'm at the end of this. So I have this super saver, no red heart super saver, um, that I have not balled up yet because it's my emergency yarn, and all I'm gonna do is tie this on here. Most people do the. Let me show you how you do it for real. You take this off and lay it in there. This has a lot of static. Okay, then you take your yarn and you take a little bit of it and you lay it right next to it and let it catch that first needle. Take your drill off and let it catch. Make sure that it catches, okay? I, I run it a few and then I put it back in the tensioner. Put it back in the tincture, and then I wind the rest or the row. I wind the row so that it catches and don't drop. Okay, so it's secure in there, and then I tie it. And then I tie this so I'm not dropping it. Okay. Make sure I don't have a drop stitch over here. And I do have a drop stitch. I should have tied it first before I went. So let me show you how to do a fix a drop stitch, which I learned from a YouTuber on yesterday, which I am so happy about. Okay. Usually I tie right away and I don't have a drop stitch. Today I decided not to do it and I have a drop stitch. Okay. So what you have to do first is you have to find where your stitch has dropped. My stitch dropped and it's right here. That's where my drops, I mean my, my stitch is right here. See that? Okay. So what you do is you take your yarn, your needle and you grab it from underneath. And it's dropped off of this stitch, off of this needle. So I'm going right underneath this needle and I'm grabbing it. See that? 
Oh, wait, I got an extra one. I don't want that one. And this is this upsets me when I'm almost through and I want to drop a stitch. But since I've learned how to fix it, I'm a happy camper. Okay, so I'm going to pull this so I can have weight. Okay, so this is how you fix a drop stitch. Can you see this? I hope you can see this good because I don't know how to zoom. I, I'm not about to mess with that camera. But okay, so this is my first stitch. This is the drop stitch. Okay, so you do is you take the one next to it and flip it in front of it. Then you take this one and fold off of it. That just stitched it back, okay? So now this is my new stitch. Take the one next to it and flip it in front of it. So now my stitch is back here. I'm going to flip in front of it. So that put it back on, that one, that row. Then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put this one in front of that one. And then I'm going to take that one over. There go my stitch. I'm going to take this one, put it in front of it. Just put it in front of it. And then I'm going to make sure it's separated. And then I'm gonna fold it over. So now I'm back at the where the stitch dropped. So I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna put this one in front of it. Put that one in front of it. And then I'm gonna take the stitch that, that I'm working on and I'm going to fold it over. So now I'm back at my stitch. What I have to do is continue to crank this, making sure that all of my stuff is on it. And these are the ones that go in there. And I'm going to put it on my, put it on my needles, on my, right there. And make sure it's on there. This has a piece of thread that is not on there. There we go. So you see, you make sure you put it around there and then you crank it. Uh, I hope I can drop it again. See, it's in there. Oh, that was the stitch. I did drop it again. But we're right here with it. It has to go over those needles. Mm -mm. Okay. So I got it. Still there. You flip it over that one. And you bring it over. You bring this one over. And you bring it over. So now it's back at the top. And you put it on your needle. You put it on your, yeah. So it's on the needle now. And as I turn it, it has to catch on there. And it just kept caught. See it? It's under there. See it's under there now? And then keep going and let it catch the next one and it's under there. So now I just fix that drop stitch. I'm gonna run it. I'm sorry, I got a blanket laying over me that's falling down. And I'm gonna run it and make sure that it's caught. Because you don't want to get to a hundred stitches and your blanket is, I mean, your hat is not right or working or it has a drop stitch. See that? Now the drop stitch is fixed and we are at 102. So we're gonna put this back on and we're gonna keep going.
And see, the good thing is because I marked, I took a marker and I marked the top of my loom. Can you see this here? I know when that white needle is coming back around. See those marks? There go my white needle, which was about to drop a stitch. Ha, ah, caught it. So you always make sure it goes on the right. So that is 110. I'm just going to do a safety one. and and um, bring it. There we go. So I, I'm at 111. Okay, so take this off. So I did all of that with the drill standing up. And this would have been finished if I had not dropped a row. But I'm still at 21 minutes. So then I like to use, it came, this machine came with some Donnie needles, but I like to use the metal ones. I purchased some metal ones from Joann's and I like to use these. So what you do is you take a length off. I like to take a lot because it makes it easier to do the sewing when I take a lot. So I'm going to take this out the tensioner and I'm going to wind. So it dropped. I dro stopped it on the white needle. I'm going to thread my needle. And then I'm going to use this to pick up my stitches. Okay. Okay. So since I stopped on that one, I'm going to pick up that stitch. And that's where I'm going to start to take this off the hook. So I just wind a few. And then I grab it and pick that up. So what you're doing is you're taking your dawning needle and you're sticking it between right in the middle and picking that up. You're grabbing it right in the middle and you're picking it up. What I do is I hold the next one with my finger so that it don't pop off and you have a drop stitch. You don't want that. Um, I usually do a few at a time and then pull. You can do one at a time until you get the used to it. Till you get used to it. Um, I'm just, I just don't. Okay, and usually I take this one with it because it's half sticking up. And then you just roll a few. A lot of people roll them all off. I'm not secure enough to roll them all off because I'll drop one and I know I will because I have before. So it's easy for me to roll a little pick up a few and all you're doing is picking up your last row and dislodging it from your knitting machine which will allow you to make the hat um close close your hat um on this one i picked it up in between so all i do is go back and pick the full one up okay and then you twist off a little bit and this process will take you a minute once you get the hang of it, even a minute, you know, a couple of minutes tops, you'll learn, you'll learn your own speed and you'll learn how to pull. And you see how this came off and it's, it's fine. Okay. And it's taking me longer to do this because first of all, I'm far away from my machine. Normally this is right up against my knees. But for video's sake, I need it to be where it is. So, and you'll learn your own rhythm. I, I learned how to do this with the plastic needle, but I love this metal needle now because it's firmer to me. But you might like the plastic needle. So you have to, you know, get what you, use what you like to use to help you. I find that this needle here has a smoother um, tension, like it's straighter to me, like the plastic needles seem to bend, but this one doesn't. And so I really love this. And it was a few dollars at Joann's. And it's funny because I bought a pack and then I went in my stash and I had a pack, but that's okay because if I'm working with other people, I'll have extra. Because we're doing the hat not hate for the anti-bullying campaign. 
Um, and I'm going to be teaching a couple of people how to use this machine. I do have my Addy on the way. I bought it from eBay. And so then I will teach them on this machine and then I will use my Addy machine. Okay, so I'm down. And so if I would have not held that down, that would have came off. So now, there you go. I have that hat made. And so all I do is take this away and move it out the way. This is the box that I sit it on. It's, that loom is in there, okay? This is the box I sit it on. So you, anything that will level this playing field out is what you need to use, whatever you have, okay? And then this is a little bit further down, but you still can see me. Okay, so then I take, what I do is a quick job. This is my hat. I caught all of my stitches, and then I pull. I make sure that it's all straightened because this is the good side. I straighten this out and I pull. And so you see that hole, I pulled it already tight. So it's really not a hole. So what I usually do, well, this is what I usually do. I usually go in a few stitches, a few row uh, of the stitches on the top until I get to the other side. I'm at the other side now, okay? And then I go around this way until I get back to where I started. So there's kind of like thread in most of those rounds, okay? I go back to where I started. And then I go crisscross. I go across here and come out. And then I take my thread See that? And then I put my thread in there because what I'm forming is a knot. Make sure that short side is out. What I just formed was a knot. Okay? I form a knot up there. And then I do it again. See that thread right there? And I form a knot. And then I go back in and then I stop. Okay, so then you have to, you have to finish your hat. Okay, so I take this, that is where that original drop stitch was that we had to work on and I know it is. Okay, first thing I do is I stretch out my stitches. I stretch them out. You need to stretch out your hat. Stretch out those stitches and get those stitches stretched. Okay. I stretch that way and I stretch this way. Okay. And then wherever I have a knot is, I cut it. And I put some of this fray check on it. And it's you get this from Joann's. I have two bottles of it. And I just put some where the knot is. Let's see where I had to fix it. It do look a little bit distorted, but as you fix it, it looks normal. Okay. There is that other knot that I had. Is that it right there? Yes. I just take a little fray check and I just put some on there, okay? That just helps to secure the knot that it won't come loose. Okay, so now I have my needle in there and this is what the hat looks like so far, okay? So then what I do, I take my hat, I take my needle and I put it through and then I pull it and make this into the shape of the hat. I pull it all the way to the other end and it's out right here, right? Then I take this string 
and I pull making sure that you straighten it up and put all of it in there and I pull so now I have two strings hanging out together and I pull to this one is tight I pull to this one is tight and they're touching each other the tip of the first part is touching the tip of this one and I take it and I tie a knot in it and I do that to hold them together just like that. So now the two is being held together. Okay. Then I take another needle. I guess I could take this one. I must have moved it into another case. Okay. And so I'm taking the plastic needle. It doesn't matter whichever one you use. And then I put that in there. I cut some of this down because it's just a lot. And so now I take this and sew up this hole. So I go around this one like I did the first one. I go around. Just like I did the first time. And I go back to the front. Pull. And then. I go across. And. I make a knot. I go across. And make a knot. Okay, and then I put some fray check on it. I, I usually always put fray check on my knots. Just a dot of it. You ain't got to be crazy, heavy handed, right? So now you have these two together. What I do is I take this off and a lot of times I use, you can get this right here. It's a needle threader from Joann's. Got three different sizes of needle threaders. I slide this in the head of my needle, just like that. I grab my yarn and I slide it off. And then I take my needle threader off and voila, needle threader. So I'm not trying to look for it. And both of them is on here, okay? Then what I do to make it easier, I cut my thread to match so it won't be uh, uneven. Then I take my hat and then I stick it down there in the middle of this one. I try to get as closest to the middle of this one. And then I go back and forth. Because this hat is now reversible. And I tie a knot over here. Then I go back over here. And I try to come up the middle. Because when I'm, and I'm pulling. Not too tight that you'll break your yarn. But I'm stabbing into that other hat. And I'm coming out the side. And I try to come out as closely to the top as I can because I'm grabbing that other hat. And then I go back in there. Oh, my needle thread came out. Okay, my needle thread came out. So simple to thread that needle back. And then I go in there. And I'm done with this side. So I bring out that those threads and I tie it in a knot on the top. I tie it in a knot. I add a little fray check. Just a dot of it. You don't want a lot. Okay. 
So I'm done with this side and I stick this in there, bring it back out as closely to the top as I can. I do one more time on this side, one more time on this side with a knot. And I pull as tight as I can on my knot. I add a little fray check on there. And I have these foldable scissors. I take this and I separate the two hats. And I just stick that needle down in the middle and I come out somewhere. Then I take it and I pull it a little tighter and I cut it. And when I pull it a little tighter, those neat, those threads fold back in there. Okay. And in order to make it look good, I take the hat and I do this every time and I twist it and pull. And that makes the hat form its correct shape. I do that on that side and I do it on the other side. Now this hat is complete. See that? It's, it's done. So my drop stitch, you could tell is a little loose, but as the person wear it, it's going to stretch it on out and it'll be fine. And that is a complete hat. Inside and out. So it's double-sided. So if you don't want that top piece to show, you wear it on this side. If you want that top piece to show, you wear it on this side. There we go. So this is my example on how to use your cin cheek, centro, whatever, knitting machine. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.